Putin wants the Soviet Union back. Britain issues warning to Russia amid NATO training. When Russia's war in Ukraine began over two years ago, neighboring countries feared that they could be next. And NATO asked itself, was it prepared to defend its territory if war arrived on its doorstep? The answer was no. So its military chief decided it was time to ramp up NATO's strategy and revive its military headquarters. And for the first time this spring, NATO will exercise brand new war plans to prepare for the worst. The plan comes as Donald Trump makes another run at the White House and expresses skepticism about NATO along the way. Russia will pose a long-term threat to NATO. Therefore, the alliance needs to adapt its collective defense, states the Minister of National Defense of Lithuania, Avidas Anososkas. Lithuania has discussed the possibility of deploying air defense assets in the region with Germany, Sweden, the Netherlands, Italy, as well as Greece, but specific agreements have not yet been reached. According to Anusoskas, Russia continues to strengthen its capabilities against the West and will pose a long-term threat to NATO. Therefore, it is extremely important for the adaption of NATO's collective defense, which is currently ongoing, to be implemented as quickly as possible, he said. The Defense Secretary of Britain is warning Russia's president not to test the patience of NATO allies as combat-ready forces train in Eastern Europe. GB News was given access to a NATO training exercise in Poland, where British and Polish forces are working together to plan for any possible attack by the Kremlin. Speaking as troops practiced clearing enemy buildings, Grant Schaps said, we're sending a very clear signal to Putin or any other despotic leader that we will stand up for ourselves and don't try it on. We're living in a more dangerous world. We are simply here to defend our values of freedom, sovereignty and democracy. And that means that we do need to be prepared to stand up for it, he added. He also warned that Putin's endgame is to carry on expanding Russia. He wants the Soviet Union back. He's invaded Georgia. He's invaded Chechnya. He invaded Crimea before he went into the rest of Ukraine. How much more evidence do we need? Yemen's Houthis threaten to extend ship attacks to Indian Ocean. They have hypersonic missile. Yemen's Houthi rebels claim to have a new hypersonic missile in their arsenal, potentially raising the stakes in their attacks on shipping in the Red Sea and surrounding waterways against the backdrop of Israel's war with Hamas in the Gaza Strip. The missile can reach speeds of up to Mach 8 or 6,200 miles per hour and is powered by solid fuel. An unnamed military source told Russia's Sputnik news agency. Houthis plans to begin manufacturing it for use in attacks in the Red Sea and Arabian Seas and the Gulf of Aden, as well as against targets in Israel, the source added. The source went on to say that the following months of testing, Yemeni Houthi forces have also upgraded their missiles and drones to carry warheads of twice the explosive power as what it had in its arsenal. Abdul Malik Al Houthi, the Houthis' secretive supreme leader, said the rebels will start hitting ships heading towards the Cape of Good Hope in Africa's southern tip. Until now, the rebels have largely struck ships heading into the Red Sea toward the Suez Canal, and such an escalation would target the longer alternative route used by some vessels. It remains unclear how they would carry out any possible assault. Our main battle is to prevent ships linked to the Israeli enemy from passing through not only the Arabian Sea, the Red Sea and the Gulf of Aden, but also the Indian Ocean towards the Cape of Good Hope. Al Houthi said, this is a major step and we have begun to implement our operations related to it, he added. Al Houthi said, about 34 Houthi members have been killed since the group began the attacks, which have been aimed at 73 ships. Meanwhile, Iran and the US reportedly held indirect talks in Oman, the first in months amid their long simmering tensions over Tehran's rapidly advancing nuclear program and attacks by its proxies. Iran, the Houthis' main supporter, claims to have a hypersonic missile and has reportedly armed the group with the missiles they now use. European Union warns Russian victory in conflict will have serious consequences for US and Europe. A Ukrainian loss to Russia would hurt Washington's credibility as a security provider. The European Union's High Representative for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy, Josep Borrell, warned during a trip to America. Kiev can't wait for the presidential election in the US to get more aid, he added. Borrell spoke to the press in Washington after meeting senior US officials, including Secretary of State Antony Blinken. 
He said his message was that Ukraine badly needed the additional assistance which was currently blocked in the US House. The next months will be decisive. Many analysts expect a major Russian offensive this summer and Ukraine cannot wait until the result of the next US elections. Brussels' top diplomat said, a Russian victory in the conflict will have enormous repercussions for America and for the system of alliances built around the US and Europe, he added. Should that happen, no country could be sure anymore that Washington would come to help any ally under attack. Since Ukraine is not a NATO member, the US is not bound by any obligation to defend it. US President Joe Biden has pledged to help it fight Russia for as long as it takes to prevail. Last year, Ukrainian forces attempted to launch a major counter-offensive using Western-donated heavy weaponry but failed to score any significant territorial gains. Amid Kiev's battlefield failures, the issue of continued aid has become embroiled in US partisan politics. The Republican-controlled House has blocked Biden's request for an additional $60 billion in assistance with Speaker Mike Johnson arguing that the White House was unable to present a convincing strategy for achieving victory in Ukraine. Burrell pledged the European Union's continued military support for Kiev but said the US needed to pull its weight too. Moscow perceives the Ukraine conflict as a US-led proxy war against Russia and has stated that it is risking far more than the West.